In this video, I'm going to show you how to set up Pi-hole using Docker on Ubuntu Server 20.04. To get Ubuntu Server, you can go to ubuntu.com forward slash download forward slash server, choose option two, and then download the ISO there. You'll use that in VMware, which I will show shortly. Next, you need to go to pi-hole.net and there you will see Docker install. We'll be following that script as soon as we get Ubuntu set up and running. Now on Ubuntu, once you have it set up, log into it. Now, Ubuntu server is text only. That's, there's nothing wrong with it. That's just how it runs. Um, so uh, don't be terrified by it. It's the same terminal as Ubuntu or Pop OS. So once we do this, we want to type in sudo apt update. This will find the updates for the operating system, at least for the, um, the repositories that we're looking for. So next we'll type in sudo apt install docker.io. Then we add the argument dash y, which means yes. It will take a minute because Docker is a, it's not a large file, but you know, it's medium size. So if your connection is slow, this might take a few minutes. So let's switch back to Firefox while we're waiting on this. At the very top of the page, um, you'll see install, sponsor, donate. But if you look down just a little bit, you'll see the supported operating systems. There's Fedora, CentOS, uh, Ubuntu, Debian, and Raspbian. At the top right, you'll see Docker. So really anything that runs Docker, you could run this Docker image on. And that's, that's the beauty of Docker. So if we click the install and scroll up, you will see the Docker compose file. But we're interested in the script for this demonstration. So when you click that, you'll see this is the nice script that we want to run, it's really elegant. Uh, then we click raw and we're able to download this into our Ubuntu server and then run the script. The Docker is almost finished loading. We're at 85%, so we're almost there. Get the URL at the top, copy it, and then we'll paste it shortly into um, our Ubuntu server. Great. Control L will clear the screen. Now we can type in sudo docker run hello world. This is a test to see if it's working. And if you get hello from Docker, then Docker is running the way it should be. So now that we have Docker installed, there is a couple of steps that we need to do first. There's a resolver service that we have to disable in Ubuntu, and then we can set up the DNS server. All right, so the scripts that we need to run is sudo systemctl stop systemd-resolved.service. So I'll put that in here now, and these will be below in the video comments. Now that we've stopped the service, we need to disable it. Next, we need to manually add a DNS server. So sudo and then a text editor, resolve.config. And you wanna type in name server and put in any IP address that you like. This is Google's, so you can use Cloudflare, you can use the roots, whatever DNS server you like. Save it with Control X, press Y, and then enter to confirm. Just to verify that that's been saved, you can cat it. And 
and it is saved. Wonderful. Now we can get the script from GitHub. If we go back to Firefox, we want to take this URL and then wget it. wget is a program built into the terminal that will, it's, it'll download the website. Like, think of it like inspect element and you select it all and copied. Edit, paste, and press enter. Great, ls it, and you'll see docker run.shell. Now let's edit the file. There's a few things that we need to change, notably the time zone and the IP address. Now I haven't looked up my IP address yet, so I need to find that. I can type that in by putting hostname dash I. Now, if you're a little more advanced and you'd like to have two screens side by side, side by side, I'll show you. Um, you can type in something called tmux, control B, and then percent. That'll let you go between left and right. Uh, control B left, and I'm typing here. I can type in print, you know, print working directory or ls, and I'm working over here. And then I can switch control B, and now I'm on the right side, and you can go back and forth. So if I do hostname uh, dash i, hostname dash i, We'll get the IP address. We go to the left and type in nano docker run dot shell. Scroll down to where it says dash e server IP and switch it from your loop back 192.168.40.131. You should statically assign your IP addresses on an actual production server. Uh, Now that we saved that, we'll just go into it one more time to verify that it's stuck. It did. So again, you need to change the time zone and the IP address. Now, the next thing we need to do is actually make it executable. If we ls-l and we look at the script, it's readable, it's writable, but it's not executable. Type in chmod 700 and then the name of the file. So I'll explain. 700 is a combination of reading, which has the value of four, writing has the value of two, and editing, or I'm sorry, executing has the value of one. So if I wanted to give someone full privileges, read, write, and execute, that's four, two, one, seven. The reason there's three numbers is because the first one is myself, the second one is my user group. The third one is all the other users on the system. So 700 implies that I am, or actually is dictating that I have read, write, execute privileges. No one else can even read, edit, or execute the script. If I rerun the previous command, you will now see docker underscore run dot shell is green and it's read, write, execute. So let's exit out of tmux because we no longer need the dual screen and type in sudo, which is super user do run our script. Now it's going to download the image for this first. That's sort of um, uh, the term is pulling where it'll go to the Docker Hub repository and download it, which is what it's doing right now. I should also mention if you don't have a mouse or keyboard, you can press Control or Alt in your VM and you will get your mouse back. Um, now that we know that what the IP address of this one is, we want to go to our client and get it set up. I go ncpa.cpl. That will pull up the control or the network. Uh, configuration for this port. I can go to properties and go to IPv4 and statically assign the IP address. 
Now, just to verify one more time, I type in host name dash i. The 172 number that you see, the second one is actually an internal IP address for Docker. It's not the one we want to use. We want to use the first. So 168.40.131. 1, I can click OK right here. And let's just test to make sure it's working with NSLOOKUP. And it is now referencing the pie hole. Good. So now let's go to the admin page. You'll see here that it is successful and it has a password of uh, this right here that's 853X. So I'm gonna take a note of this and write it down on another screen here. Uh, let's see, so it is 853XCGP3. Now your password will be different. This is randomly generated. Now, if I go to a browser, I can now go HTTP colon slash slash 192.168.40.131 forward slash admin. And I'm talking to my Docker container now. I can log in on the left side using the password that was just given to me, which is 853XC. GP3, and I'm in. There are many reasons why you'd want to use Docker to set up a server like this. Um, you, For one, you can just, when you deploy it, you can, uh, if you need load balancing, you can actually spool up many of them very quickly, or um, if you need to destroy it quickly, you just destroy the container and PyHole will be gone. So again, in this video, we use, we installed Docker ran a hello world program and verified that Docker was running. And then we disabled the resolver service on Ubuntu and installed PyHole on Docker. Thank you very much. I hope you have a nice day.